The femur is the longest, heaviest, and strongest bone within the human body. The femur is known as the thigh bone extending from the hip to the knee. The femur's length represents more than a quarter of the height of any individual. The function of the femur is to support the body's weight during many activities such as standing, walking, running, and jumping. Many features of the femur will be identified in this video. Anatomically, the femur is divided into three parts, the proximal end, the body or shaft, and the distal end. Superiorly, the proximal end articulates with the acetabulum of the pelvic bone to form the hip joint. Inferiorly, the distal part articulates with the tibia and the patella to form the knee joint. To identify whether the femur is right or left, first thing to do is finding the linea aspera. The linea aspera is a rough ridge running down the posterior surface of the shaft. The head of the femur connects to the hip joint, therefore the head is proximal and medial. Because the linea aspera is posterior and the head faces medially, this particular model is a right femur. The femoral head is a ball part of the ball and suket synovial hip joint. The structure of the hip joint causes the multi-axial motion and allows the human to walk, run, and jump. The hip joint bears the body's weight and the force of the muscles of the hip and the leg. Both the surface of the head of the femur and the acetabulum are covered with hyaline cartilage to provide a smooth surface for movement of the bones and prevent abrasion. The head of the femur has a small central pit known as the fovea capitis that serves as a ligament attachment point. The ligament of the head of the femur runs from the fovea capitis to the acetabulum of the hip bone. The neck of the femur is lateral and distal to the head. The neck connects the head to the shaft of the femur and forms an angle with the shaft. This angle different in each individual, but in general approximately 130 degrees. In infants, it is about 150 degrees and with increasing age, it reduces to an average of 120 degrees. The greater trochanter is a prominence on the lateral and proximal part of the shaft of the femur. The greater trochanter is the insertion site of the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus muscle and is also origin site of the vastus lateralis. The lesser trochanter is a small protrusion inferior to the neck of the femur on the posterior medial surface of the shaft of the femur. The lesser trochanter is the insertion site of the iliopsis muscle. The intertrochanteric crest is on the posterior surface of the femur between the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. The intertrochanteric crest is insertion site of the quadratus femoris. The intertrochanteric line is on the anterior surface of the femur between the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. The intertrochanteric line is the site of attachment of iliofemoral ligament. The gluteal tuberosity is a roughened area on the posterior surface of the bone inferior to the intertrochanteric crest. The gluteal tuberosity is the insertion site of the gluteus maximus. The linea aspera is a rough line on the posterior aspect of the body of the femur. The linea aspera is insertion site of the pectineus, adductor longus, and adductor magnus muscles. Also, the linea aspera is the origin site of the vestus medialis. The medial and the lateral condyles are two rounded processes at the distal end of the femur which articulates with the 
two condyles of proximal end of the tibia. The surface of the condyles is covered with hyaline cartilage to protect the bone from damage. Both the medial and the lateral condyles of the femur are the origin attachment site of the gastrocnemius muscle. The inter intercondylar fossa is a depression on the posterior surface between two condyles. The intercondylar fossa is the site of attachment of two essential ligaments, the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. The patellar surface is a smooth area between the two condyles on the anterior surface of the bone that accommodates the patella. The medial and the lateral epicondyles are small bony prominence on either condyle of the femur. The medial epicondyle of the femur is the attachment site of the tibial collateral ligament and the lateral epicondyle is the attachment site of the fibular collateral ligament. Any break along the shaft of the femur is known as the femoral shaft fracture. Because the femur's shaft is so dense and hard, breaking the shaft usually takes a lot of force. Car crashes and falls from the heights are the most common causes of the femoral shaft fracture. The neck of the femur, in contrast, is the weakest part of the bone and usually becomes weaker and fragile with age and osteoporosis. A fracture on the neck of the femur known as the hip fracture. This video is prepared as the part of the course requirements of human anatomy at Saddleback College.